M. Fletcher Brown with another artist video blog at kicks96country.com. Our guest today, now I met him a few years ago back at, uh, in Nashville at a country radio function we call the country radio seminar. Um, and it's taken him that long to come down here and visit me. I told him then, I said, come on down to Muscle Shoals and visit me. But, you know, he lives all the way up in Canada. Sure. So uh, it, it just it just takes a little longer to get there from here. Please welcome for his very first time at Kicks 96. Jason Kirkness. How are you, Jason? Doing fantastic. How are you doing? I think I met you in, was it 2022? 23? Uh, 2022. Okay. We were sitting back to back on those little couches. Yes. And I was like, I know that voice. Yeah. I've talked to... <laughs> yeah. That's the exact laugh. That was yeah. exactly what tipped it off. Yeah, I do. I do have a very distinctive laugh. Very distinctive. Um, And now you're originally from, what, Manitoba, Canada, is that right? Yeah. Um, I'm north of North Dakota, a small little farming wow. community called Cleefeld, Manitoba. Cleefeld. Is about three hundred people. Uh, when three hundred. Yeah. It it got that because what I read was that it was four hundred people. Okay, it's up to fourteen hundred now. They put no. in. A, they put in a couple subdivisions and cul de sacs. Really, a lot of babies being born in Cleefield, I guess. So yeah, fourteen hundred uh... people. <laughs> Everybody there is just there. A whole lot of shaking going on, as Jerry Lewis would say. About four to one cattle to people. Really? Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And now this is that's where you were born and raised. You grew up there. Yes, sir. Okay. So um, I guess then it's not it's not um un, it's not unheard of that you would have been raised probably with a pretty healthy dose of country music you know uh a lot of country music a little bit of jesus L well yeah. yeah that's i mean you always need a little bit of jesus you need a lot of jesus really but um that's 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 just you know something we, we just kind of take that as take that for a given. granted around here take it for given it's a given for you know where i come from Fair. but um how did you get from a town of three four hundred people all the way down to Nashville, Tennessee to start recording. What made you decide that it was time to pack up your bags <laughs> and your guitar and come to America and just try to break into Nashville country? Uh, the funny thing that I keep telling people is like, the amount of hubris it takes, where you don't sort of realize when you're, when you're an artist to see like, you know, Eric Church on TV or you mm -hmm. see Keith Urban on TV and you're growing up watching these guys on the, the ACM awards and all that. The amount of like just bold and bold courage that you have to have to go, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. And then pack up all your bags, put it on the minivan, drive uh, 1,800 miles, uh -huh. roll into town, not know anybody, go down to Broadway, introduce yourself, shake hands, go up and jam a couple of times and start meeting people and networking and like just, you know, uh, doing it that way. Uh -huh. uh, looking back, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, anything, any shot like that's going to be crazy. But, you know, I mean, we wouldn't have the stars that we had if, if they hadn't taken their shot. No, exactly. And, um, you know, you sort of find out when you get there, like wh what you're good at. Like maybe you're going to be like you went to do the thing, but you want to be a songwriter now instead. Or you wanted to get into publishing or you wanted to like, I think being famous is one of the jobs, but it's like the smallest percentage of jobs. Uh -huh. So, um you know, you just start, you, you start networking and you start meeting people and you're like, hey, do you want to write tomorrow morning or you want to come to our 10 o'clock write tomorrow or Saturday? Like, and you start kind of getting involved in the community and you start meeting people. And through all of that, then you start seeing that, like, there's a much bigger world of the music business that you can still be involved in now. Yeah, I feel pretty lucky. <laughs> well, I mean, I think all of us are lucky to get to do if we're if we're doing what it is that we really, really want to do in our heart and our soul. Yeah, I would say that you're lucky. Um, but your story is, um, I won't say that it's terribly unique, but it is one of the more compelling stories because you've done most of this up to this point kind of just on your own, right? You, you built all this without a whole lot of, of, at least at the start, without a lot. Like you said, you packed up and drove like, what, 1,800 miles? Yes. Sir. On your own. Uh, yeah. Right? Uh, I fundraised a couple of couple of grand from like some friends and family. I thought I had enough to stay forever. Uh -huh. uh, turns out I had enough for about a year and a half. Yeah. Uh, I had to go home for a little while. Uh, in 2017, I put out my first record. Uh, I didn't know there was such a thing as a radio promoter or anybody who's that, that was their job. Yeah, the learning curve was pretty steep for you. <laughs> well, so I called, I called a thousand stations a week. I called every station in America every week. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were talking off air a little bit. Like, I gotta say thanks because you were actually the first person to take my call, and uh, I think you're the first person to give me airtime in the states as well. <laughs> really? Yeah, 2017. It was a song called Whiskey Kiss. Yes. And I uh, I believed in the song and I loved it. And uh, we did a little video for it and we got you know the half a million views and all that stuff. 
And uh, I just kind of kept working at it myself. And then I found out, oh, you got you to hire a tracker and you got to hire a manager and you got to hire all these, these folks to kind of work with you. And uh, I've been lucky to kind of, as time goes on, you know, trial and error. Uh, I got a great agent now, so I get to do all the festival dates mm -hmm. in Canada. I get to go out in front of like major artists fairly regularly. And mm -hmm. I don't know why, but a lot of this worked. <laughs> well, I mean, it worked because of, you know, your a, a combination of your tenacity, mm -hmm. your will, and just, you know, being talented. Um, as you mentioned, you put out your first song in 2017. So here we are um, all these years later and seven years later. Yeah. And you now have a new single, What's Wrong With Me? And I remember I, I was going, I listened to the single and I was thinking, okay, what, what could this story possibly be? What's wrong with me? And it's one of those great moments that i think every guy has probably had at some point in his life when you know he's with a woman that he just looks at and he's just like how, how is this woman with me how does she not realize what's wrong how does she not see what's wrong with me and we've all had that i mean guys we kind of bear that quietly and silently we do we don't really talk about it but we all had that moment and that's more <laughs> or less where did that song come from okay i gotta clarify one thing before i tell this story it's, okay uh, this was written by a good friend of mine jason petrick uh, he went. He was my guitar player when he was 18, and then he went on to have a great career in Canada himself, uh, like as a solo act, and now with his brother in a band called Petrick. He wrote the song. Okay. That being said. Great song, Jason Petrick. <laughs> great song. He's going to love that. <laughs> but just, okay. So it all st started with kind of this one quote. Uh, I accidentally said one evening was, uh, I don't know that I'd ever want to date a woman that wanted to date me. And he said, why? And I said, because she clearly has bad judgment. <laughs> who was it? What famous historical figure was it that said I would never marry any woman who would have me? I can't remember. Okay. <laughs> I, I can't remember who it was. Is that a maybe in Winston Churchill, somebody like that? I would never marry any woman who'd have me. <laughs> I've always loved that. Yeah. So uh, it kind of started from that, and then just uh, you know, he he sent me over the song, the demo, and uh, I heard the song, and he's like, "Kirky, we wrote this song exactly for you," and I was like, "Ah, you did, didn't you?" <laughs> <laughs> At first, I actually had said uh, no to the song because uh, the demo was a little whack. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it just had a lot of like, you know, when you, maybe people don't know, when you first write a song, you, you make like a drum machine and then like a pretty brutal electric guitar and mm -hmm. uh, you do the vocal and it's like, I'm not. But then uh, I was listening to Dirk Bentley's record, uh, riser and the song urban in kentucky yeah and how it starts yeah. off with that acoustic guitar just kind of like plugging along and i was like this this kind of vibe and that song and i think that's kind of where we wanted to hit mm -hmm. kind of land somewhere in the middle of those two things and well i mean it's a great song i mean it does kind of hit a, a vibe kind of like what you're talking about like with that and it it kind of draws you in pretty early in the song so by the time you get to you know the refrain you know you're you you kind of feel like okay yeah i was ready for that I see, I see where this is going. And, and you plug into that feeling because you probably, if you're a guy, you've probably thought that before. I'm not saying women haven't had that thought before, but I'm saying, guys, we don't talk about it. Like women talk about everything. Yeah. Men don't talk about things like that. <laughs> we just don't talk about things like that, you know? Um, and it's, and it's, it's pretty, it's pretty real. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, and you've got, this is the first single, is the first single off the, off the coming album? Uh, this is uh, probably for you guys, the third single. Okay, the third single for yeah. the from the album. And the album is, is it out or is it due out? Uh, it's gonna come out in November. Okay, yeah, I knew, okay, it was soon. So the album is due out here in just a couple months. Yeah. You're three singles deep already. We, uh, unfortunately, if you're a member of my fan club, you already have the record because mm -hmm. uh, this is a little plug for signing up for that email list because I finished the record about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, just how singles go is like, we have to hold the record back because we gotta do another single. We have to hold the record back again because we have to do another single. So it's gonna be out in November. But uh, if you're in the fan club, uh, once a year I do something silly, like an exclusive song. This year, everybody got the record six months early. So. Wow. Well, that's perks right there. Yeah. What's the name of the album? Uh, the album is called What Got Me Here. What Got Me Here. And Jason Kirkness is our guest. Look for a live performance from Jason elsewhere here on our YouTube channel. We're going to get him to play a song for us, you know, either the singular or something, whatever he wants to play. He may surprise you. Good job. Right? So if there's somebody that's, um, that's hearing this story and they're going, man, I think Jason Kirkness is kind of cool. I want to learn everything I can about him. I want to hear more music. Where do they find you on the Internet? Uh, JasonKirkness.com. That's K-I-R-K-N-E-S-S. -S. And uh, all my socials is at Jason Kirkness. 
All right, Jason Kirkness is our guest. If you want to hear the single, What's Wrong With Me? Call us at Kicks96. We'll be happy to play it for you. We've got it. And um, Jason, don't take two years to come down and visit. I mean, I know you're all the way up there in Manitoba, but just don't 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 take forever to come back and visit us, all right? Well, now that I got the invitation. Now that the, <laughs> you had the invitation two years ago. <laughs> it takes a while. to. It I does. walked, man. It I walked the whole way. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Jason Kirkness is our guest. We'll see you next time on another artist video blog, kicks96country.com. My baby sees something that I don't see.